Welcome to Bunnyfish Crafts. I'm your host Heather, known as Bunnyfish on Ravelry, Plurk, Instagram, and YouTube. Today is Monday, the 9th of December, and this is episode 56, Scissor Skills. Grab some sticks and string and come sit with me. This week, my daughter cut all of her hair off. It wasn't super long because she doesn't like when I brush her hair, and she has this um, genetic problem that we call Sally the Dreadlock. It's just like a dreadlock that forms in the back of her hair when it gets long-ish, especially when she won't let me brush it. So I usually, you know, keep the back a little shorter and bring it down to about chin length. Well, now it's very um, Mia Farrow from Rosemary's Baby. She cut off her bangs. There are no bangs. This part is still like a, an okay length. It comes down, you know, to the natural hairline. It's not like she buzzed her hair or anything, but yeah, she cut it pretty short. And it would actually look okay, except that in the back, she cut like chunks out. If I had a set of clippers, I could just fix it and it would be fine, but I don't. So it's going to look a little funny until it grows out just a tiny bit and I can trim it. I have a couple thank yous. Two of my friends gifted me patterns this week. Haley sent me the My Zombie Boyfriend. They're a pair of socks. I will link them in the show notes. I'm not sure where my tablet is. Otherwise I would show you what they look like. But I'll be making them in the next year. Um, Sidetrack, Melissa of the Meltran Design Podcast is having a um, the year of the queue in 2014, and I work out of my queue a lot anyway, so I'm just going to join along with her. The other pattern was from my friend Becca, and she gifted me the Measure in Love hat by Megan Williams, and I'm just going to throw it out there that the story of the story behind the hat makes me cry every time I hear it or like tear up and this song Measure in Love from Rent always makes me tear up. Hopefully there won't be any tears while I'm making the hat. That would be pretty upsetting. The sweater knit along is still going on. It goes through the end of December 31st. If you finished a sweater between November 1st and December 31st, put it in the finished objects thread. I'm pretty open to what a sweater is. There's a chatter thread, feel free to ask if what you made qualifies, and the tag for that is BPH Sweater. Finished objects, I have three this week, and um, I didn't even touch the little turkey hand things, mostly because Gabriel took what I had and was playing with them, and they just made it back to my desk yesterday. I'll finish them sometime, hopefully before I put the Christmas decorations away for this year, we'll see. I finished these arm warmers. They're not for me. They're for some unknown gentleman, for a friend of mine. I made these using um, Karen One Pound Black, and they're a two by two rib the whole way down. I did the increases, which you probably can't see because this is black, maybe on this side, uh, maybe a little bit. Oh yeah, right here. Okay, so I did the increases along the inside of the arms. I just split a a row and added in knits and pearls as appropriate. Um, what else can I say? Oh yeah, they're made on US size 6, 4.0 millimeters. I think I started on by casting on 32 stitches here and I don't know how many I ended up with at the arm. I just kept trying it on to see if it would fit over my arms. And then when I was like, mm, my arms really aren't that big. So hopefully they'll fit a guy. I made my boyfriend try them on because his, his arms are much bigger than mine and they fit just fine on his arms. They're a little bit snug, but I mean, that's ribbing. That's the point. So these are done. I have to weave in the ends. Four ends to weave in and then completely done, but I'm calling them done because the ends will get woven in in a moment. I'm going to take those off and put on my sweater, which 
my friend Josh made for me. He thought he was making it for himself, but no, instead of making it for me, you can listen to all about that in the ZK 2013 wrap-up episode, which was um, in the middle of June, if you're interested. But it is the Delancey. I don't know anything else about it. Ericania yarn, maybe? I don't know. I didn't make it. I can't, can't be in charge of all that. I finished the socks for Steve. I'm not sure if he saw these because I use his debit card to go grocery shopping. I'm not on the the bank thing just because he's hardly ever, we're hardly ever together during banking hours. So whatever. Anyway, he, he forgot to grab his debit before he went to work. And no lies. When he took the kids, um, did I tell you he took the kids? I think I told Plurk that he took the kids. I had a really bad headache. He took the kids out for the the evening to get dinner at Burger King or something, somewhere with slides. And he forgot his debit, so he came back in and he just went into my purse to get it out of my wallet because I don't keep anything really private in my purse or my wallet, and it was his debit card, so I don't care. Some people get really weirded out by that, but I'm totally not weirded out by people going in my bag because what are you going to find in there? Nothing. Um, but, but my bag was sitting on top of his socks because he had come in really quickly that afternoon. So I just dropped my bag on top of the socks really quick. So he may have seen them, not in their finished state, but hopefully he wasn't paying attention because he's really good at not paying attention. Anyway, here they are. These are the Zipper Lexicon socks by Kirsten Hall, and his feet are, you know, way too big for the, the sock blockers, but you can get an idea of the pattern. The yarn I used is Nooch Fiber in the Midtown Sock, which is 100% Superwash Merino, and it is called, no, not Midtown, Morningside Sock. Midtown is 75-25. And this is called Cloud Nine. So hopefully he will like them. Another pair of Christmas socks done. Yay! And the last thing that I finished is something that I have been talking about a little bit but haven't really been showing. Finished my three ply. This was made with the ply of pink and blue and a ply of blues mount from Empato alpacas that I picked up because they were a dollar for those little 30 gram balls of fiber and then from Jehovah Jireh woodmill an aqua a teal color a medium blue and black so this is a strand with black, pink, and blue. And here is where it's more of the aqua blue and pink. And somewhere in here, there is one spot where it was all three blues lined up together for a foot, maybe. So this is about 100 yards of a fingering weight, and it is still damp. So I'm going to put it over here because that means it's still kind of cold. I'm pretty pleased with it. 100 yards is not too bad. I haven't weighed it. I had, I don't even think there were 30 grams. I think they were 23 and 22 grams for each of the balls. So I got 100 yards, and I still have a quite substantial bit of singles from both the pink and the blue and the just blue because the the ball that had black in it was much smaller than the other two. So I don't know what I'm going to do with those singles. Probably make a Franken scheme someday or just ply them together for whatever I use this yarn for. I don't know what I'm making out of this. So if you have a suggestion, I am open. 
I think it turned out really nice. It's balanced and I washed it this morning. So that's good. It came off pretty balanced though. It just had like one tiny half twist on the bottom when I pulled it off. Works in progress. This is the stalagmite sock by Cookie A. It was just the cuff last week. And I am to the heel turn. So gusset and all that fun stuff and then foot. So maybe next week this lovely sock will be done. It's got these awesome, I'm not even showing you on my hand. See these awesome cable diamonds. No, that's the wrong direction. The yarn is Miss Babs Yummy in the colorway prints. This is the onlyest skein of Miss Babs I have ever had, and I am really enjoying it. I really, really like the colors. There's a blue and purple in it. I don't know if you could see that. The lighting is not so great today. It's very overcast. Welcome to winter. I worked on the Strider by Claire Ellen. Oh, this is the front. And here's the back. The fronts are textured and the backs have these awesome cables. So pretty. This yarn is Wicked Cool by Daisy Knits. It's on the shoot base, which is 60% superwash merino, 30% bamboo, 10% nylon. I'm loving the way that it's working up. It's really, really soft. I haven't knit with a lot of socks with bamboo content. And the ones that I have knit with bamboo content have all had like the elasticy strings in them too. So this is totally different than any sock yarn that I've worked with. And I really, really like it. Plus, I really like these colors. Blue, green, and purple. Gorgeous. I worked on the Lakeside Socks, but just barely. It's by Julie, Julia Viconson. So I did one repeat. Nothing to write home about. Premier Serenity Sock, colorway navy, which is not actually navy. And I started Christmas present for my nephew, but that doesn't look like anything. This is a, an arm for the Sweet Pup Crochet Pattern by Terry Cruz. This is Karen One Pound in white. And this hook is US F5, which is 3.75 millimeters. Mostly I started it so I would have somewhere to put the scraps from weaving in ends. Because that's what I like to stuff my toys with if I have scraps. I also have a lot of um, stuffing. I had a comforter that died last year and rather than throwing away the fabric and insides from the comforter, I use the comforter to stuff toys for my everything. I don't know, for the kids and me. So I used that stuffing for that and I used the fabric to make a rag rug. So I have new things. I participated in a swap from the Knitting Den for ornaments. So here is the ornament that I received. These tiny cute little mittens. I got these early last week and oh it's been difficult to not just stick these on the tree because I think they are adorable. They're so much smaller than the mittens that I made for my friend. They're so cute, and they came in this nice little organza bag. And then I totally got spoiled on goodies. Everything came in this bag. Look at they, those cows. It's a drawstring bag, and it's, you know, basically the perfect size for me. Oh, it's got cow fabric on the inside, too. And there were some consumables, which were very quickly consumed. Some truffles, some hot chocolate, which was delicious. I 
don't know that I have a lot of experience with caramel cream hot chocolate. I do like caramel and chocolate though. And then peppermint bark chocolate. Oh, those were so good. I was really good. I made those last like two whole days, which is insanity for me. And a little pad of ornament paper, super adorable. And some yarn needles, which is great because I am down to, I think, two yarn needles, one in a sock weight size and one in a bigger size. So perfect, two of each. So that was fantastic. And I won a, a, um, a knit along on Wolf Farms. They had the soccer along. They have it still going. It goes through the end of December and they have been drawing prizes at the end of every month that ends in er. I started it in September and I won for November. I won this fantastic skein of a war between Greek gods because they're dying. And yarn from Sophie's Toes. It's in the Colorway Vintage Kitchen. And I agree with Dawn of Wolf Farms. It's very Christmas, but it's so pretty. It's not like crazy in your face Christmas. It's just pretty. I don't know what I'm going to make with it. I'm just going to um, hold on to it for a little while until it talks to me. It's 100% superwash merino. Super pretty. And I love the front of the business card. I did some reading this week. I finished reading Anti-Goddess by Kendare Blake. Ooh, glare. There you go. That's better. It was really, really good. Possibly, if you've been watching for a while, you've noticed a theme, which is I like fairies and mythology. And this is about a war between Greek gods because they're dying. And in order to live, they, they're killing each other. It's really good. It mostly centers around Athena and Hermes and Cassandra. So it's really good. I highly recommend it if you if you read young adult. Some people don't. That's totally okay. Some people are like, mm, I'm a grown-up. I'm not going to read young adult. And I'm like, I'm going to be a teenager until I'm dead. So there's that. Also, I started reading adult books like B.C. Andrews when I was way too young to be reading V.C. Andrews. I don't know, eight? So I'm just all about reading age-inappropriate things. I finished that a couple nights ago, and when I got that from the library, I got it off of the new release teen shelf. And this was there, Devoted, by Hilary Duff. Possibly you remember in January that I read the first book, this is the sequel, and after I read the first book, I was like, oh, I'm probably not going to read the second one because this one was just not great, blah, blah, blah. Well, here I am reading the second one because it was, it was looking at me. I went in, it was on the shelf, I saw Auntie Goddess first, I picked it up, and I was about to walk away, and then Devoted was like, hey, aren't you forgetting something? And it wasn't that bad to read, or maybe I don't remember that it was that bad to read. I remember thinking it was not good. I'll read it and report back with my findings next week. Also, it only says Hilary Duff on the cover, but it's with Elise Allen. Not cool not having both names on the front cover, in my personal opinion. My list this week is three podcasts. The first is Ellie's Knits Insanity with Ellie. She lives in the UK somewhere. I can't remember. She has her daughters on occasionally. She doesn't have a ton of episodes, maybe 20. I don't know. I should have checked this before I recorded, but I didn't. I really enjoy her podcast. 
she is designing a book. Um, she has a lot of medical stuff going on, which she talks about sometimes, and that is what her designs are based on. It's really interesting. The um, It's really interesting listening to people who are designing talk about how they came up with the concepts for their designs. The second podcast is All in One Podcast with Jordan. She is 14. Maybe she's 15 now. I can't remember if she had a birthday or not on the podcast. Sometimes I have podcasts on in the background, so I hear things, but I'm not really listening to them. So sometimes I miss information. Anyway, she's homeschooled, but she would be in high school if she were. I mean, I'm sure she's in high school right now. And she knits, crochets, and spins. She does a lot of spinning on a drop spindle. Really enjoyable. There are um, not enjoyable if you can't handle interruptions because she's 14, so she doesn't have, like, she can't banish everybody from her space all the time. So there are interruptions, but it's not bad. And the last is Joy and Smiles, Joy and Smiles with Joyoti. She has a blog, but she also writes on the blog, the podcast blog. So I'll link to the blip for that. She's on blip. She hasn't recorded in a while, but I enjoyed the 22 episodes that she has up. I sat, well, I didn't sit down. I had it playing from my computer, just one episode after the other for, I don't know, a few days <laughs> until I got through all of them. I just really, really enjoyed listening to her. She does, she knits and near the end she starts spinning and she also sews. There's lots of talk about that. Am I really at the end? Well, I have I have one more thing. So the reason why it looks like, I feel like it looks like I've only made a little bit of progress is because I'm doing a test knit for my friend Josh. And I can't show it to you, but I am going to show you the yarn that I'm using for it. It's a two color project. And I really want to talk about the yarn because I only have one skein of this. Solar Flare Fibers. This is the Apollo base, which is 80% BFL, 25, 20% nylon. 80 and 25, not okay. In the color C class. And this is what it looks like. And I'm really, really liking the BFL. I mean, it's not as soft as the Merino, but I... I like the contrast because the other color that I'm using is from Science Monkey Mercantile Faraday Sock and it is in the Chattaboogie color. And it looks like this. So these are my two colors for my project, which you will see soon. It's um it's a very quick turnaround time for this test knit. So Maybe next week, maybe two weeks from now. We'll see. Yeah, that's really everything that I have to say to you this week. I'm sure I could think of more, but then I would just be babbling. So I hope you have a fabulous week, and I hope you made something fantastic with your six and string. Enjoy your winter time or summer if you're in a different hemisphere. See you next week. Bye.